Hello fellow PC gamers and uh, today we are here having a look at The Surge. Now this game uses, uh, as you probably know, it's the, the devs own engine and they're quite a talented bunch so uh, I've got high hopes for this. Uh, as you can see, brand new game needing to be started, I've not been on this game yet, I've not looked at any of the options so I'm going to go through all the options including the sound control ones and everything and have a quick look at the game to see how it uh, looks on screen. So without further ado, Let's go straight into uh, the option setting. Okay, so straight off the bat here, a lot of options for gameplay. As you can see, a lot of inversions and targetings. Let's have a look. Auto adjust camera pitch, camera smoothing, sensitivity, bobbing, auto lock on, auto switch lock, finishing sequence rate. Okay, Let's see what that one is. Uh, combat hit slowdown, body part names, body part highlights. Yeah, quite a lot in there, isn't there? Okay, let's go across to the what should be the big one graphics, video, resolution, windowed, and full screen. Now, this will probably go up to whatever your card supports. Yes, it does. So it starts at 1024 by 768, that's the lowest it will go support all the common ones like I say it's more sort of card dependent driver dependent than anything else we'll leave it on 1080 or 1440 we'll leave it on 1080 1080 we'll try 1440 shortly v-sync and full screen yeah v-sync 1.1 1.2 and off leave it one on one it says here, when using the one-on-one -on -one option, the frame presentation interval will be synced to the display's refresh rate. Now, to me, that's your ideal setting. Yeah. It says, use the 1.2 setting to make the game present new frames at half the display's refresh rate. We'll go with one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. Uh, refresh rate. You can actually... No, I didn't think you to adjust that. Depends on your monitor, of course. I do not have a free sync monitor. Uh, so obviously things are going to be a bit tied there. Brightness, HUD scale, player status UI always on. Yeah, you can just turn it on and off, can't you there? Text scrap UI always on. Yeah, proficiency, damage numbers, additional law hints. Yeah, I could probably do with that. Additional tutorial hints. Yep, yeah, seeing as I've personally never played it before, that would be a bonus. Is that the bottom one? Yep, yeah, just scroll down. Okay, if we go over to graphics, preset auto. Now it has preset for me a mixture of very high and highs. This is an R9290X um, AMD Radeon card with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. We're uh, with the FX 8350 at 4.2. RAM is running at 1833 and 16 gigabytes of it. That's the spec of the system. I've installed the game onto a Samsung SSD and Windows 10 Pro is on an Intel SSD. So loading time should be kept to an absolute minimum on this. So should streaming assets. So if we turn auto off, never a fan of auto. Okay, we'll start high. Yeah, not very high. Oh, very high is the top one. Resolution scale. I like the fact it actually explains everything as you're going through it. If you look at this on the right hand side here, it's got a, a few bits and bobs. It says the scaling factor applied to the internal rendering resolution. Lowering this value can greatly improve performance depending on the GPU used. Beware, increasing this setting to a higher value than 100% will lead to super sampled image, but this may severely impact the game's performance. Use with caution. But if you're watching this type of video, you will already know super sampling, you know, you don't really get much better than that. Anti aliasing uh, techniques are very good, but super sampling is what you really want. So I'd be probably tempted to push that up to like 120, try it out. For this video at the moment, we'll leave it on 100 and go from there. So texture quality is on the maximum at the moment. I would imagine they're all going to be low, medium, high, very high. Let's quickly run through, yes. Off. Oh, well, we can have shadow quality off. Right. So, unexpected. Volumetric lighting. Normally quite a taxing thing, this. So, uh, if you are struggling with your frame rate, you might want to uh, turn that one sort of down a tad, shall we say. It doesn't appear to give a readout for how much VRAM you're using, which is a shame. 
I find that quite handy. Uh, a lot of the more modern games nowadays I've noticed are pushing the VRAM requirements through the roof. Uh, my next card is most definitely going to have no less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM on it. I mean, GTX 1060, 6 gigabyte edition. Yeah, that's okay at the moment, but for future proofing, I'm going to go with 8. Okay, anti-aliasing modes. What have we got here? Can we turn motion blur off? Yes, we can. Leave it on. Anti-aliasing. So, SMAA, FXAA, off. Three options. That's all. Mm. You could probably lose that down a notch and push your, uh, your super sampling up a little bit. Depends on how you want to do things and what sort of capabilities your PC's got. Obviously, if you're running a 1080, uh, a GTX 1080 or equivalent, you're not really going to worry about any of this. You can push it up to the max. Um, screen space reflections on and off. Quite taxing as well. Another option there you might want to think about disabling if you're struggling with it. Ambient occlusion. Leave that on. Subsurface scattering. Uh, again, that's you know you see a lot of faces etc the detail there uh, it sort of texture to everything lens flare, lens flare intensitivity depends if you like lens flare or not really i do i always leave it on the thing i don't like is chromatic abbreviation there you go not sure many people do chroma shift it says here an effect simulating the failure of a lens to focus all colors to the same convenient Convergence point disabled. Right, let's move on to audio. Can we hopefully we can do these changes without reloading the game. Audio. So we've got support surround sound. So look, master volume, voice volume, effects volume, music volume, subtitles. Okay, I can't see any support for surround guys. Uh, and I'm only running this on a 2.1 system uh, and a headset obviously so I can't really test that at the moment uh, future videos will contain full surround sound setups it's something else I'm looking to do on my next major PC build which is coming very soon and I will be running a video blog on what I do and how it turns out so keep posted for that one in future months right so moving on to controls okay so I've got a standard default dusk edition shall we say xbox one pad here same as all the others um and it has got controller imagery as auto so what else have we got xbox there you go that's what i wanted to check for playstation 4 fully supported you can use that controller if you wish i will certainly be giving it a go however personally i think the xbox one controller is ergonomically nicer just sits better in the hand for me some people prefer the playstation I prefer the Xbox controller. There you go. Uh, Steam controller supported. Okay. Didn't really expect to find that one in there. It's pretty good. you got all your, all your stuff. Not actually used a Steam controller yet. I've heard it's a different approach. Must, uh, must get around to getting one of those and trying it out. Okay, what else have we got? Just leave it on auto here. Yeah. Controller layout default. Option 1. Option 2. Custom. Oh, you can actually custom the buttons then. Right, okay, that's how much of it can you custom then? Yeah. Oh, we have to click customize, look down here, and we can change pretty much everything looking at that. That's good, very good. Right, what else can we do? Let's go back to default. Vibration on, yeah, obviously. Southpaw. When enabled, the camera is controlled with left stick while the movement is done with right stick. Yep, fair enough. Keyboard. Standard ASDW, yep. Mouse, yep. Collectibles. Uh, injectables, sorry, not collectibles. God, I've been playing too many Ubisoft games. Yep. Everything there seems to pan out pretty well. So let's go back. Still got my ultra graphic setting or very high graphic setting. Let's start a game and see how it goes. So, choose empty slot one. There we go. And how long are we going to take to load? I wonder. The ancient Greeks once said 
A society grows great. Can we skip? Old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit. Doesn't appear so. We tend to forget about this. Tend That's a shame. I was like, oh, yeah, escape button is, is skip. I know you're glad to be here. I am. Yep, keep pressing escape. And you can actually do something right. Wrong keyboard mouse at the moment. Okay, uh, let's see if we can seamlessly swap over to controller. Yes, we can. No problem there at all. So, let's put our on-screen display on and see what we're running like. Okay, so we've got our on-screen display there popped up in the bottom right-hand corner. And we can see the game at 1080p with everything on very high is using 3.3 gigabytes of VRAM. Now that's very, very good news for you GTX 970 owners. You want to keep it under three and a half gigabytes there. Uh, GTX 1060 owners, you're going to have to drop something down, otherwise you're going to have streaming issues. It's going to stutter a bit. You're going to be busting your VRAM limit of three gigabytes. Like I say, we're running a four gigabyte card here. Um, it's fine. However, I don't know if you can actually pick up on the mic. This game has maxed my fan profile i've got very very loud fans on the graphics cards at the moment it's uh i'd say the it's running sort of 70 percent very loud that though being a problem with uh the r9 290 390 cards so you know okay They're pretty detailed character models though. that's quite a good looking kudos to the artists very nice solid shadow edges not too bad on the anti aliasing you can see it a little bit in the distance as we we look at the slabs on the floor but overall that is a good looking game i like that yeah this is fine okay so that's an interesting note it says here i'm using 10 gigabytes of normal ram or just under Hmm. We've got a locked 60 frames per second. Can't seem to make it just wobble the mouse around. Nothing's phasing it in the slightest. It's completely locked. So let's just change things up a little bit. Options. Video. Preset. Let's go to medium and see what we look like, yeah? Uh, where's apply? Oh no, we're just back. I look things. And we can change it on the fly. Brilliant. No real need to change it, of course. Not when you've got lock 60. You've definitely lost a good chunk of definition there. The character, my character, his face detail doesn't look as good. I would expect that, though. Uh, what else have we got? We've still got the fog. The floor's gone rather blurry. However, we are down now to 3 gigabytes of VRAM. So anybody with a 3 gigabyte card memory looks like your, your default sort of option let's go and have a quick look at the guards see what they look like and no there is not a speed option as if you were running this wheelchair has one speed by the look of it okay let's have a quick look at the models and they're still looking pretty good actually okay let's drop this down another one Options, video, low. Is there a very low? No, just low. Okay. Back. Continue. Oh, we've took quite a massive hit now. Uh, we're still pretty good though. Uh, not made much difference on VRAM. 2.9, 2. Yeah, 2.9 to 3 gigabytes of VRAM used. So, you'd have to go and really change things to get this down any lower than three gigabytes let's have a look uh, what we could do options video hmm off turn off volumetric lighting let's see how we go from that okay we've now uh, vram not really affected Now, this game needs a 3 gigabytes or greater card, looking at my readout. You'd probably have to start dropping the res down. 
So, let's do just that. Let's go display 720p. Or maybe 900p like a lot of the Xbox games. Should we try that? Let's give it a go. Continue game. Hmm, interesting. No, nope. 3 gigabyte card, even at 720p. So, let's see if we can go the other way now. Let's go 1440p, see what we run like. That's a favourite with a lot of a lot of people, isn't it? So, 1440p, and we'll go very high. Let's go. Okay, I'm reading, even on this menu, I'm suddenly down to 45 frames per second. My normal graphic, no, sorry, normal memory has gone to 10.5 gigabytes. VRAM, even on this menu, 3.5 gigabytes. Continue game. We are running 44, 43 frames, 46 frames per second. Obviously, you're going to lose a lot of the anti aliasing here. Yeah, it's pretty much eradicated on my display. Frame rate, though, has took the hit. We're between 44 and 50, low 50s. Maybe in a battle sequence or whatever, you'd uh, drop a few more frames. Don't me wrong, totally playable, just. You know, not as I would want it. I'm looking at the shadow of the wheelchair on the wall there, and that is very pristine, very sharp. Next to the yellow and black barrier. Very good. Okay, let's go completely ridiculous. Push it up to 4K, or my equivalent of, shall we say. Uh, I missed it. Round again. There we go. Let's see what that does. See if it crashes the system. And back. And continue. Ooh. We are running at. It's so tiny. Let's have a look. 3.6 gigabytes of VRAM. Frames per second, 42. I'm moving around. Like I say, bear in mind anything cracking off on screen will probably drop it. Dropping down to 40, might have seen a 39 briefly. Low 40s. If you wanted to lock this at 30 frames per second using the VSync option that you have on this game, or by even if you're using a video card, you could use the inspector and lock it down to 30 frames a second, you could run this in 4K. Very nicely, in fact. Personally, I think I'd 1440 it and run it, you know, a bit higher frame rate than 30. If you're comfortable with 30 frames per second, you know, like the like console games are, then, then fair enough. But for me, I think I'd probably run it at uh, 1440 and go from there. Come on, speed up. Although this is pretty constant, 40, 45 frames per second at 4K. Well, not quite 4K, but you know what I mean. Nice looking. I'm not going to play too much of the game, obviously. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. This is literally a look at all the options that are available to you. It does look quite interesting, though. It's having the time to play them all, isn't it? Well, PC guys, I hope you found this useful and interesting. If you did, please give me a like on the way out and think about subscribing for more dedicated PC and console games pretty much daily at the moment. It's either gameplay or these sort of little half technical videos that I'm doing. So yeah, we'll see you again. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.